You're listening to the Untitled Car Show in partnership with RightFootDown.com. Visit RightFootDown for your daily automotive fix. If you enjoyed today's program, please tell a friend. It's the best way to support this show. If you want to visit the archives, go to YouTube and search for Untitled Car Show. That'll bring you to the archived episodes. If you want to follow this show, just search for Untitled Car Show on Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram. You can always send an email to the show at Untitled Car Show at rightfootdown.com. We're so glad you decided to spend the next hour or so with us. Without further ado, let's get into today's program. Let's. Hi, you're listening to the Untitled Car Show. Um, I think. GTP Johnny, as a professional podcaster, is in the shitter right now, but I'm not 100%. Nope. <laughs> nope. Washing the hands, man. Washing the hands. Ah, okay. Uh, we are joined After today. a long, hard day's work. <laughs> we After are... a long, hard day's work, man. Uh-huh. I'm doing pretty good. He's uh, got some impressive noise cancellation. I couldn't hear the flush or the washing or anything. I know. Mm. Yeah. Well, well it's yes. professional podcast. Professional, man. yeah. yeah. <laughs> he's got that. He's got the uh, foam set up in the... Uh, bathroom. Actually, that wouldn't be a bad <laughs> place to do it, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, okay, first I got to do some interviews here. So we got uh, Michael, he is Interstate 366, and we have, I'm going to mispronounce this, is it Eric is Alfalfa? Yes, All right, I don't you, know. you pronounced it fine. Yeah, I don't know why, I'm sitting here looking at my notes, I'm like, uh, somehow <laughs> I'm going to screw that up. Um, on, on a serious note, though, why don't we put that, like, you know what I'm talking about, that foam they put up in sound recording studios? Why don't we put that in bathroom? That would make sense. Because, 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 because people because like to sing in the shower. Nobody would hear you scream. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh and, reason. Yeah. Well, it, it, it probably it probably wouldn't block the most important thing, which is the smell, mm. as would, opposed to the sound. It would probably absorb you know, it. Yeah. I think it might absorb the smell, yeah. yeah. You know, I, that's a good That point. might make things worse. They're, yeah. they're designed to absorb sound, so, you know, why would they absorb smell? Because, you know, they, they work exactly the same, right? I think I think that's how that works. Yeah, sound but but really though, the foam I would I would, all joking aside, probably would absorb some smell. Yeah, uh, I know, we should Febreze. Like that. Mm-hmm. Just keep a bottle of Febreze next to the toilet. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm gonna come up with acoustic cancer because I don't know how many of you are all married, but I, I can't. You know, you you hear noises you never want to hear coming from your loved one sometimes, and I don't know some noise canceling stuff might just be wonderful in there occasionally. Maybe just in well, the master you know. Suite. You know, sometimes it's not about that. Sometimes it's about your layout of your house, because sometimes when you're peeing in the toilet, it funnels out into the living room like funneling Niagara Falls through a coffee straw. <laughs> see, see, that's you know, we got of someone who's we got one of those six light foot. switches. Hmm? We got one of those light switches that turns on the fan, so you can't go in there without the fan. And the fan just acts as this wall of white noise that just kind of blocks everything out of the bathroom. There you go. Hmm. Which is kind of frustrating at times if you're like trying to yell at someone with the door open, but like no one can hear you. You know what else would be really nice? Heated toilet seats. Yeah. <laughs> Why yes. do we let the Japanese get ahead in crap technology? That just seems like strange to me. Like the American diet is built for spending a lot of time on the toilet, and we let them get ahead with all this technology. That's just maddening to me. Like, how can they get the fancy talking toilets? I want a fancy talking toilet. I might buy a fancy <laughs> talking toilet. That, that's like Import one. But that's how you will know I, I have made it big. If I will make a video on my fancy talking toilet, that is that is the line of delineation right there. Like at least your toilet for the show. At <laughs> least let me cut some untitled car show decals for the toilet, and uh-huh. we'll we'll dress it up a little bit for you. <laughs> that, that is uh, a thing, Johnny. That you brought up. I was wondering if we would talk about it. So Johnny made up some uh, decals and he sent them over to the show, uh, which you know they came out very nicely. I mean. I, I'm tempted to, if people want one, if they want to send me an email, I'll probably send out a couple of those. What do you think, Johnny? Do you think that's a good use of those? Sure. <laughs> <laughs> I've pretty much plastered on everything I can get my hands on, so I might keep a couple laying around here. We, we, we might talk a little bit after this uh, via our usual means of communication. I don't know. Uh, yeah, but if anyone wants one and they're listening now to the call-in show, which I don't know. This one, this one goes up and down in how often people listen to it. So if you're listening and you want one, send me an email. Um, 
Yeah. Well, we had a shitty start so far. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Poop on. Well, it's, it's your I fault. see what you did there. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's your fault. I mean, come on. It man. is mine. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> well, I mean, after after what I've or what came into the shop today, um, I I well deserved that because <laughs> I have a I have a red a restored red '57 Chevy in the shop right now, and I, I I've been drooling for all day. <laughs> uh, so. It, what, what, 57 Chevy, just the uh, sedan I'm picturing in my head? Two-door, yeah, two-door, and then uh, it has a 383-stroker in it and it, uh, some Kyger SS rims on it, and it, it is very tastefully done. I mean, this guy even put, like, a 75% maybe window tint on it, so it's a real light tint, but it's not like he tried ricing it out or anything. It's It's very clean, very well done. And it's just all like, <laughs> but also, also it scares you because that's an eighty thousand dollar car, and if I fuck up, it's on me. <laughs> yes, it is very much is. Uh, this is the detailing biz you got, Johnny. Yep, that's the detailing business. It's called Attention for Detail. Yeah. Me and my fiance both own the business, so yeah. it's going well so far. <laughs> and uh, it was weird because it, you know it pays to be nice to whoever you meet, right? So I had a customer come in, and he needed a ride home. I'm like, no problem. Gave him a ride home, and then he goes, I want to show you something else. Okay. Opens up his door, and right, right as, you, as soon as you open the door, there's a Model A racer, like a race car Model A. Very nice, restored, and whatever. And then he pulls the tarp on another one. He has a, a Model A pickup truck. Like, Okay. And then he takes me to his garage, opens the garage, and then he has a Model A pickup truck project. <laughs> I'm sensing the nice. theme. Nice. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I'm all like, can I clean these? <laughs> <laughs> but, Michael and Eric, do you clean cars? What do you do? No, no car detailing business? Uh, I'm a fan of the uh, self-serve car wash on my own. <laughs> it's, no, don't get me wrong. Those are nice. The brushes will screw up your car. The touch will yeah, go don't deep enough. Brushes. I just use the spray. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. yeah the, the, the touch. I do the touchless. Lay their soap and then rinse it off. Yeah. Now, what color? Now, it, it's amazing if you guys like take a little bit of a clay bar to it afterwards. You find out real quick that they don't go deep enough. <laughs> I've, I've thought about getting a clay bar, but it is a fantastic, are. fantastic investment. I, I I did it yeah. once a long while ago to of all things a Saturn and I was it was it was fun but I can't, Johnny I I don't know how you do it I that detailing is probably the or washing the vehicle is probably my least favorite thing about doing it. as a matter of fact I probably what? hate washing cars more than I actually enjoy it so oh well I mean it's it takes it takes a certain like. I guess ADD and OCD kind of combination, or kind of combination there, where it's uh, like, I love a clean, shiny car. It has to stay clean. <laughs> and um, yeah, and right now, a, right now it's pollen season here, so. Yeah, yeah. Ooh. Yeah, about, I remember pollen season when I lived back east. That was, that was hell, on everything. Yeah, yeah. not just cars. <laughs> Pollinating so hard. <laughs> Yeah, well, John, I know it makes it even weirder when you when you stop and think that that's flower sperm all over your car, mm-hmm. and yep. in your nose and yeah. in your mouth and in and your, your ears. Nose, yeah. 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 <laughs> it's like why do f- trees got to be so fucking freaky with each other? It, <laughs> why do I have yeah. to be involved? That's what th- that's what I want to know. <laughs> what is what is the oak's kink that it needs to get that's, my nose involved when to get on? And that's not consensual on your part either. Is that like I know like raped by? trees like exactly i feel I mean, like that's it's not like, kosher that shouldn't be legal mm-hmm. it's like i don't enjoy getting a cold four times a year because of the season change <laughs> so that the so the episode is going to be called tree rape and crap talk just just so you all know because <laughs> we're off to a phenomenal start here clickbait <laughs> yeah <laughs> car show and i don't think we <laughs> car show talks hey, about there was... trees being rapists there was a little car talk in there. Come on. There was. There was a lead into car talk and then lead back out into tree rape. <laughs> I mean, Maybe we'll eventually work our way back. 
Oh, Man, you guys are. We're, this is starting to feel right like at home. I mean, when the Bad Habits Network goes oh. on a tangent, then we get into panda porn and <laughs> John, a, a play. <laughs> Do you just want to get all your plugs out? We'll, we'll get Johnny in here. We'll go. Well, we're talking about plugs now. Are you serious? Nah, yeah. No, we'll we'll get the plugs out at the end of the show. But Johnny just roll right into it. Johnny, you, you you should be a business owner. You're good at that. But just remind me of that. Oh, and only for three payments of ninety nine and nine, you can get yourself a bad habits network. But, <laughs> uh, I'm I'm impressed. Oh, it's it's a good show. It it. It kind of seems like it disappeared off of iTunes, though. I need it back on iTunes because I'm too lazy to go look for it on the browser. <laughs> yeah, we're we're on Spreaker now, just um, because of just the way everything w- was with the previous um, host. It the quality was crap, and we had a we had a monster truck guy call in, and the, the guy who drives the zombie truck, and he was a really cool guest, man, and he was really patient, but the the signal kept going out. It kept going out. It kept, you know, dropping on our end, and we we're like, "Yeah, we we can't have that anymore." <laughs> yeah, well, that that is pretty awful. But well, I'm curious about all the technical details. But we can go into that when we're not on air later. Uh, but I don't know. It, it's now now. Here's kind of a question I wanted to bring up on this show anyway, just to kind of get, bring it back to car related stuff. So I was sitting at a stoplight the other day. It was raining hard here in the D.C. metropolitan area. And there seems to be, you know, a lot of people are just checked out. They don't have their headlights on. They didn't have, you know, they had like a headlight burnt out. They had a taillight burnt out. But I didn't find myself nearly as frustrated with them as when I was stopped at the light. Someone came head on with like a couple of other people next to them with their brights on. And when you have your brights on and you're in a group of cars, it's not like I can flash my brights and inform you. Hey, dipshit, your brights are on, because then I'm just flashing my brights at everyone right in front of me. But I literally couldn't see anything because of the rain and the glare, but the red and green light. So it's like, well, I, the light turns green. I got my left turn arrow. I hope no one's coming, because I can't see shit. So I- am I crazy for being more pissed off at the guy who's with it, but he's kind of still out of it than the guys who are just completely out of it? I don't know. I would have, I would have flashed him anyway. <laughs> well, I try. I'd say they're all terrible people. Yeah, but you know, I'm, I'm a cynic. What can I say? <laughs> well, the, everyone's awful. I mean, we're all human beings, and by that very nature, that means we're all just awful, terrible people. But um, I don't know. Am I? Which one pisses you off more? If you're on, the, if you had to be on the road with someone, would you rather have the guy behind you with the brights on that you can't get to realize? Just turn off your motherfucking brights. Or would you rather have the guy in front of you who stays in front of you who has two burnt out brake lights and his head li- or his tail lights aren't even on at all? You know, I mean, that's hard to say. I mean, certainly the people with their lights off make me angrier because I see that more. Um, but yeah, the the bright lights would certainly be frustrating. But I feel like you could still yourself be a little more with the person with the lights out as long as you're aware that they are there. Third now, other right people now. who may not see them coming could be a problem, but yeah. I, don't know. I yeah. feel like I'm fairly cognizant even when people don't have their lights off that I notice other cars around me anyway as best I can. But if there's lights in my eyes where I just can't see no matter what, then I can't see no matter what. Yeah. <laughs> so I, think, I feel like the brights would be more frustrating. Okay, I feel, I feel vindicated then. Is this just how the uh, rest of you feel? I think I'll yeah. I'll take the guy with the burnt out uh, taillights because the, there's this like new thing since you know however long ago called the third brake light that indicates when the person's braking if the other two fail <laughs> and uh, if I had the guy behind me I I'd probably end up pulling over and telling him to go because <laughs> <laughs> no this now there's a weird other story I had too is driving when I lived in Central Illinois. I was on a 100-mile, like, jaunt back home from Chicago, and I was on the highway, Route 55, or Interstate 55, headed southbound, and only one other guy was on the road with me, and it was, he had his brights on, and it was dense fog between the outskirts of Chicago and normal, which was about an 80-mile stretch, and it didn't matter what I did, this guy would not get out of my blind spot. 
So I would slam on the brakes, he'd slam on his brakes. I would accelerate real hard, he would accelerate real hard. There was nothing I could do. I came to a complete dead stop, pulled over on the shoulder. He came to a complete dead stop and pulled over on the shoulder in my blind spot. I'm like, I'm not getting out because this guy just might be nuts from, you know, the empirical evidence I have. But you can't see Dick. And it was deer mating season. It's like I'm going to end up having to drive, you know, if I had my fog lights on and didn't have this jackass behind me in my left, you know, blind spot. I could be doing 65, but now I'm having to do 25 because this guy won't leave me alone. It, like the ultimate little annoying brother. Like, yeah, come on, come on, let's go, let's go, let's go. I'm not leaving your side, though. Like, you're fucking it up. Turn off your brights. <laughs> what is wrong with you? Like, I couldn't even get behind him to flash my brights at him. And that was the most, uh, that might be, I feel very, like, much like I'm in a therapist office right now, I feel like that might be the source of my hatred for people who have their brights on for no good goddamn reason. At last, I have a solution. Hmm. Put one of those uh, light bars on the bump, rear bumper of your car. <laughs> I've been tempted oh, to do that. Yeah. <laughs> you're you're going to leave your brights on here. I'll just flash this. <laughs> well, d- d- Ford did an April Fool's thing where they had like a rear like thank you display. I'm convinced we need like a rear messaging board on our cars. Maybe not. I saw that. I thought that was a pretty good idea. Yeah. Like, you know, you yeah. need like a, uh, like in, um, oh, what is it, with the Mach 5 Speed Racer where you had like the buttons with all the little things. You just need like five or six like dedicated messages. Like, you know, thanks, like your brights are on, you're driving like a jackass, like you're way too close to me. Uh, Middle finger emoji. <laughs> yeah. If you have a manual transmission, you start on a hill, st- stay back. Yeah. <laughs> or else yeah, you're going to get rolled into. Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, that, that is a very good one because I've, I've had that almost happen a couple of times. That was one of the – when I was learning to drive manual in D.C., I actually turned on the e-brake, got out of my car, went up to the guy behind me. We were stopped on the South Capitol Street. It's like a little underpass, like, bridge thing. So I'd, like, go off the ramp, and I'm like, I am learning to drive manual in this car. I am very new at it, and you are giving me an inch of space. I need you to back up, otherwise – my car is going to hit your car. It's like, oh, uh, like, what's a manual transmission? Like, all right, just just go around. Me. Just <laughs> turn on the hazards and just go around because I'm just going to – I don't want to damage your car and my car. So. You familiar with the uh, Bill Cosby bit about driving a manual transmission? No, I'm not. Please enlighten me. He, he's talking about how he's, he's terrible at driving a manual transmission, and so he goes up to this hill. There's a stop sign at the top of the hill, and uh, it's time for him to go, and the guy behind him is honking, and he just – he says, I don't know, I don't want him to know that I can't drive stick, so I just stick my head out of the window and go, come around, idiot, come around. <laughs> but it turns out, he doesn't know how to drive stick either, and he's yelling at the guy behind him, come around, idiot, come around. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's good. He goes on about his struggles driving, and uh, yeah, it's it's pretty good. Yeah, I, The I, man's I, funny, I, even though, you know, he is a rapist. <laughs> I've personally felt that, not the rapist part, but the, the <laughs> learning how to learning how to drive stick and everything. Like I, I learned on a double OS 10 and it was okay, but I didn't, it, nothing really that my dad taught me really clicked until I started working at an auto auction house where I was actually getting around the, uh, like the sticks more. And then I finally, you know, like once you find the sweet spot in every car, it's a piece of cake. It doesn't matter what you drive. It's just, you know, you know, you're learning to drive with the clutch pedal and then transferring the power over to the gas. And it's, it's pretty simple to be on that. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's, it's frustrating me because the first car I bought new, I wanted to buy a Dodge challenger RT with a manual transmission, but I had learned to drive stick years before very briefly when my dad decided to like take me out right before we sold an old Camry. So I didn't even have my driver's license at this point. So you forget a lot of shit. I'm in the car, and I just keep stalling it, and the guy next to me, you know, helping me do the uh, test drive is not giving me any sort of good direction. He's like, no, just slide out the clutch slowly, and then, uh, you know, just floor the gas, and it'll just catch. It's like, oh, okay. So I'm listening to him, forgotten everything. So instead of getting the, I think he wanted to sell the automatic because he could probably get more money for this thing because it was used, but they still wanted near sticker, and I wasn't going to give him that for it. So... Anyway, I'm very pissed because I'm like, if I would have just 
spent a couple minutes on YouTube doing a quick search before I went out to get this car, I probably would have walked away with a manual car instead of waiting for a couple years later when I got the uh, Volvo. It's very sad. And then I wouldn't have had all the terrible incidents with the second Challenger. So, I don't know. Life-changing moments. <laughs> yeah, it is weird. It, I, it, I, hmm. Go on. I, I, I went to CarMax about a month ago. I test drove a uh, 2013 Civic Si, and the sales guy said it had been years since he had driven a stick. So I, I was almost like, uh, do you want me to? Because you know, at CarMax, they go out to the edge of the parking lot, then you get in the car in the driver's seat. So yeah. I, I almost wanted to ask the guy, like, do you want me to drive this car to the edge of the parking lot? <laughs> yeah. Well, it makes sense if you're actually thinking about getting the car, because if he hasn't driven stick in years, you don't want him fucking up the clutch. Yeah. You don't want to ruin it before you can even test drive it. <laughs> yeah. Because if that becomes your car and he burnt the clutch and glassed it over, you're screwed. Yeah, um, unless you pay for your not... CarMax warranty, then they'll cover it, right? <laughs> Probably yeah. not the clutch, but... <laughs> I wonder how much Doug DeMiro's articles have raised the price of CarMax warranties. I've heard they don't offer it on uh, Range Rovers anymore. Well, that makes sense. Uh, yeah, they stopped doing it like a year <laughs> or so ago. Yeah, that, for those of you who somehow don't know, Doug DeMiro bought a Range Rover that was six years out of new like four years ago. The car is 10 years old and it has a warranty on it. I think his latest update video was like they ended up putting like ten grand worth of repairs into the vehicle over that time, and he bought it for like forty three. Well, not even he bought it for like nineteen hundred dollars. The uh, warranty, it's crazy. Like you got to go watch his videos. So, and then click through and read more of his thoughts on autotrader dot com slash oversteer. Because that <laughs> I just program into your head once you see enough Demiro videos. Um, <laughs> I don't know. Now, here's another thought. So, has everyone here seen the new Top Gear? Yes. I have not seen this new season, no. Mm -hmm. All right. Nor mm, have, nope. Nor have I. I've think. only seen the Julia episode. Oh. See, this is weird. Now, I'm curious why I haven't... Because I haven't seen it either, and I got a very simple, lame excuse for it, which is I don't have BBC America anymore, and I just don't feel like proxy serving over to... Top Gear UK and watching it on the iPlayer. Because that was just a little obnoxious in my mind. I would rather just be able to watch it for free on Amazon. Why? why have I you... agree. Right. right. Yeah. I, uh, I just last got year... on... <laughs> Everyone all at once. <laughs> yes. That's how it works. Just... Uh, yeah. Go, John. I just got caught up on the uh, on the Grand Tour there. So that's that's where I am. But <laughs> yeah, it, it's uh, Eric, were you the one who's seen it or hasn't seen it? I mean, I have not seen it. Now, I watched last season. I actually paid a little bit of money to Amazon just to get the episodes the day after they came out. Yeah. And I was planning on doing that this year, but uh, then I got furloughed right before it started, so I decided not to spend that money. <laughs> but then as I was looking at when they became available, I also saw that at least the first episode wasn't available until like an entire week almost after it aired. Yeah, and so it was also more expensive this year, and I'm like, I don't have as much money. I'm paying more, maybe it's because there are more episodes, but I'm also not getting it as soon as I was before because I could still watch it the next day and then talk to people about it, you know, the night after. Mm -hmm. But Well, that was the weird thing. So last year, BBC America uh, was airing it the day after, which was still too much of a delay in my mind. But I think this year they're doing it, like you said, a week after, which makes no sense to me. Uh, Michael, you said you. Well, seen I don't it? know if it's, I don't know if it's BBC America that's doing that. Just when it's available on Amazon Prime. Well, I'd imagine. I don't know. Yeah, BBC America. B yeah, go go on. I'm sorry. <laughs> yeah, BBC America with uh, Clarkson, Hammond, and May always always had a week behind it as well. Yeah, it, that, that but was this year they moved it to Sunday. Yeah, so it's Sunday, a little weird. Sunday, Sunday. Yeah, so, I mean, I keep hearing it's better, and I want to watch it, but I just haven't like felt the need to watch it there's so much other good shit out there now it's almost become like if i can't easily watch it you know back in the day when there was no good automotive shows anywhere you had to watch it because it was the only good thing and now that there's so much good shit out there even though i hear it's better than maybe the grand tour was i'm still not compelled to watch it just because it's so much of a pain in the ass yeah especially after 
like I said, I already, you know, I've missed the first few episodes. I'm like, yeah, I may as well just wait for the whole thing to be free on Amazon instead of paying for it in my mind. So, yeah, yeah, I'd probably, mm-hmm. probably just wait. I wonder if that's affected everyone else. Cause John, you said you haven't seen it. You've just caught up on the grand tour. Yeah. I just got caught up on the grand tour. Now, like I heard about the, the dildo thing, but man, I, I really don't know why they didn't use a black one to abbreviate BBC. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know what's going on, and I think that's for the best. And Michael, you said you only seen one episode, right? Yes. In like, and uh, it was good, but the only reason I haven't watched the others is because I've usually been working when it's on. No, yeah, that makes sense. You don't have a DVR? Come on now. No, I I don't. I'm a luddite. <laughs> but you have BBC on your cable box, which is so I'm, I'm yes. conflicted yeah. here. Yeah. Either you have. Yeah, re- I have. Yeah, it's weird. I have basic cable that has BBC America. I'm who pay, who pays for cable anymore that doesn't also have a DVR? I don't even know that was a thing. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> what what part of the country are you in? I'm in the suburb of Richmond, Virginia. Mm. Now, from what I remember from my trips down 95 recently, it is like going back 20 years when you get down around Richmond, so that kind of makes sense. Tease it a little bit here, but uh, no, it's what what is the cable provider down there that has BBC on the basic cable package? I have to know. Comcast. What the fuck? The, <laughs> when I had when I had Comcast south of you know Baltimore, when I, that was the only one, and now it's FiOS up here. Then had BBC. I feel gypped. Gypped, I says. Um, <laughs> hey man, Comcast is good as long as you pay your bill. Yeah, yeah, I did. I did telemarketing for them for a couple of years, and yeah, I, I was on the the receiving end of a couple of those calls. And man, wait, wait, you, did you do telemarketing or did you do like the tech support side? Um, telemarketing or as an outgoing calls, and um, we also did um, some uh, troubleshooting calls, like tech. Not yeah, not really tech support, but yeah, kind of. Mm-hmm. Like unplug your router and plug it back in. Quit calling. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. Well, like we'll send it, like sending a hit to the box and and stuff like that. So. Mm. I I hope our paths never cross when I had a uh, Comcast down here because I was probably very rude to you. So, I'm, I'm not... <laughs> oh, the best story I could tell you though is uh, uh, I interrupted somebody during dinner time, must have, and he's like, "I want your personal number." Now this guy lived on the west coast. And I'm like, okay, I can give you your local Comcast number. He goes, no, 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 I want your personal phone number. I'm like, oh, that's all right. So I'll, here it is. I gave him the the local post number or the local uh, Comcast number in Atlanta, Georgia. <laughs> <laughs> it, that, that works, I guess. Uh, <laughs> I, I, People in call centers request the craziest things sometimes. Oh uh, yeah, I, I can't imagine a worse. A worse job, honestly, for me. Like, it was it hell. I have to know. Was it hell, Johnny? Was it? Um, I I gained about twenty pounds <laughs> because you were just sitting at a computer eating, like demolishing a bag of Crunchers, jalapeno chips, and a two liter of Mountain Dew. So yeah, I gained about twenty pounds, and <laughs> yeah, that sounds and, and right. I, <laughs> they ended up letting me. They ended up letting me go because a friend of mine showed me a uh, or supposedly showed me how to hack around their little like internet prevention thing and we were able to surf the web mm. <laughs> wait, wait, so they didn't even let you like look at like car porn how very what I know right if you're going to be stuck at a call center all day the best part about it is that you get to use a phone and you get to use the internet I mean come on now I know, right? I was, I call was centers up, are the stingiest people in the world I was looking up body kits fun. I was looking up body kits for a CTS and <laughs> <laughs> Eric, have you worked in a call center? You sound like you know a lot. I I have a few times, and they are it was the worst experience of my life. <laughs> <laughs> I hate them so much. The nice thing is, is it's always a good fallback because they'll hi- if you can fog up a piece of glass, they'll hire you. If you can fog like up a piece of glass, that is a great way of putting that. Yeah, and so <laughs> Unless... there there were a few times where I just needed a quick summer job or something when I was in school or whatever. 
that, you know, I didn't want to feel guilty about leaving, that I knew I could just get and start working as soon as possible. And so there were there were two summers where I worked at a call center. And the first time I was like, that was terrible, but maybe I could do it again if I need to. And then I did it another time and I was like, nope, never again. <laughs> never, ever, ever, ever. Yeah, no, I don't. But it, yeah, I, I think I would prefer, because my first job was at McDonald's, and I think I would prefer that over the call center. Because, I don't know. Michael, you haven't ever worked at a call center, have you? No. Yeah, okay. He's like, isn't this supposed to be a car show? Why are we talking about we talked about? <laughs> have you got to add no, that I like, I like all it. over the place. I like when it goes off topic like this. Hey, it's, man, it was it was a call center that got me into my first German Audi. Bought an Audi 5000S Quattro station wagon. A five-cylinder, five-speed, turbocharged. Mm, five-cylinder. <laughs> mm-hmm. Yeah, but for some reason, though, or I, we took it for a test drive, and I was like, "Hee hee, wait!" And you you heard the blow off valve, and I was like, "Hee hee, okay, I'll buy it for two hundred fifty bucks." And the minute I like gave the guy the cash, the fucking fan belt broke. <laughs> so yeah. okay, put it put a new fan on it, a new belt on it, and then it had a fuel issue where it, the motor wasn't getting fuel. So I was like, I had to get rid of it. Mm-hmm. I didn't even get to drive it. It was. Did you just say you paid two fifty for an Audi? Two fifty. Well, that, yeah, that's a that's an accident waiting to happen. <laughs> In fairness, that that was the generation of Audi where if you were going out to buy one new, and you made the announcement to the world like, "Hey everyone, I think I'm gonna go look at the Audi dealership," and no one tackled you, it meant you had no friends. Like that was <laughs> like, what are you doing, you crazy person? Those things catch fire. <laughs> like it, they're just terrible cars back then. Now. I don't know. I, w- I would take a two hundred fifty dollar wagon. I, you know, you could always. Yeah. yeah you could, you should have kept it. You see, this is a, if you if you come across another one of those, uh, you you just let me know about it, and I'll go get a broken fan belt Audi. Um, with a fuel pump <laughs> issue. I don't know. I'm, am I a crazy person for the wagon thing? Because it's an a- Audi Quattro and wagon. Like my dick is so hard right now. I think I might have. A I know, dude. And I. I, I mean, when, when it like, runs, it'd be be great. Yeah. Yeah, I kind of wish I didn't sell it because man, I. Me and you on the lemons rally and wagons. There we go. <laughs> that would be fun. Yeah. Speaking of that, so that sounds I... like it'd be a great lemons car. Hmm? Sounds like it'd be a great lemons car, actually. Yeah, well, it would be. If I think they've run a couple of Audi Quattro <laughs> wagons in the lemons race, simply because those things don't keep the value for shit. So, mm. I wonder. Okay, so here's an interesting thought. I wonder what car will like you know like a lot of cars go to the junkyard and that's how they meet their end you know a lot of cars you know when they get to the junkyard they just get taken apart and then parts are used for other parts so maybe 50 percent of the vehicle ends up being crushed and some cars are just they always end up broken down on the side of the road or whatever i wonder what the vehicle is that's going to meet its untimely demise more as a lemons racer than any other vehicle you know, it's a weird way of phrasing that. I, I kind of getting my thought together on that one. Like, is it going to be Porsche nine two fours and nine four fours? Because that's where my brain went to immediately. So my brain went to like Saturn plastic cars. Ooh, that's a good one. <laughs> my yeah. Mine went to the uh, Oldsmobile Achieva SCX, which was like the hi- the high performance Achieva that they only made for like a year or two in the early nineties. Mm-hmm. Oh, I wonder. That, that's a good one because those things are crappy, but they only made them for a couple of years. I wonder if they'll meet more of their demise as a lemons racer than any other means. That might be an interesting one too. Yeah, because I, I want to say there were there were less than a thousand of them. Mm-hmm. And probably all I hmm. And I wonder how many have been lemons raced. There's got to be at least a couple, right? Statistically, there's been some who've been crushed, some that have been crashed, and all that. I don't know. That's it. I have a weird, my brain went to a weird place. But no, speaking of the lemons. I'm, uh, I'm sorry, go on. <laughs> I'm, I'm thinking maybe the old Toyotas that had the all-track system in them with the turbos. I think those could be some good potential for lemons racers and not end up in junkyards. People are always going to want to buy those, mm-hmm. whether they want to drive them or race them. No, those are good little cars, and I, and I really like them, but like, 
I don't know. I don't know if the lemons are wasting material just because I don't know if they'll ever be, you know, truly crappy enough for someone to want to just Maybe. demolish Maybe. them. Maybe. The, the vans tank. might actually. No, that's true. I, I, I don't think... I don't think the uh, Celicas will ever. Yeah, maybe not. Maybe not the Celica because they're money. always kind of cool. But, but the vans. I c- I could see some of the vans going that way. Yeah. That Unless they're cool. gutted for Celica parts, I don't know. Mm-hmm. Well, <laughs> I don't know how many of those parts change over, but I imagine there's at least a few of them. Yeah, that's true. Pro- probably what's well, Toyota's, you know, kit car engineering basically, or parts car engineering yeah. basically. Um. And now I had a thought, and now oh, there we go. Back to my original thought. Okay, what car they're making new today would you like to see a spec racing series of? Mm. Mm. Mm-hmm. So, I don't, to, to kind of grab, I mean, the Miatas, that's, you know, obvious. They're already making those into a spec racing series. Um, I'm going to go just jump out ahead on this one and just go Mitsubishi Mirage. Simply because it would be probably the cheapest spec racing to ever get your ass into. So. That or uh, Fiat 500 could be fun. Mm-hmm. The 500 would be fun, but like the, would you let the Barth compete, or would you have to use a base? Ooh. I I would say you'd have to use a base. Uh-huh. Changing my thought, uh, new generation of smart car. You know that was going to be mine. That's probably smart car. Mine was with higher boost motors. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, mine, a, a mine was close to that. Even huh? What was that? Mine was close to that. Even though they don't sell it in America, the uh, Honda S six S six sixty. Oh, the little oh, yeah. K car thing they're making. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. You know what? A Jap a K car series would be really cool. Like the Suzuki, that, whatever. That would be pretty cool. Like K. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, yeah, K like cars the, uh, across the board, they're pretty spec similar anyway. I that, mean, they've all got six, 660 cc motors, about the same power output. So you could have a lot of different looking cars that still have roughly same performance characteristics. So that could be a lot of fun and interesting to watch. Mm-hmm. You, you could, and the Rex would be adorable. Uh, oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you could call it like Spec K because that, you know. Or K spec, K spec would that has a nice ring to it. Um, yeah, K spec. But <laughs> that sounds kind of like A spec, and then you know it sounds like fancy Japanese racing. But in reality, it's mm-hmm. shitty twenty year old tiny cars. I would, I would Which do is, that though. That that is my so. When, besides the talking toilet, I would start up that racing series. That'd be what I would do. I would, I would get my talking toilet, and then I would start up the sponsored, racing series. Yeah. Sponsored by Ike's Talking Toilets. <laughs> <laughs> Well, see, it's, I'll just get all the fancy shit from Japan I want. So I'll get my talking toilet, and while I'm over there, I'll just get a boatload of K cars and bring them back with me, and then we'll just have, you know, the Untitled Car Show podcast K Spec Racing Series. You know, and just race a bunch of little crappy. I would, I would get the van. Ooh, now that's an interesting one because, you know, hey, they're all. Can we, can, hmm? can we do this in uh, Chicago or in uh, Illinois, right next to a Portillo's though? Yes. Well, that that would be <laughs> we would cart one of those things. Right. And Dan, you, you sent me that that thing about the cake. <laughs> when is that? I need to figure that out because I might go back to Chicago just for the cake. Well, if you do a swing, uh, you know, we'll we'll meet up. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, I'm serious though. So for those of you who don't know, Johnny likes to torment me because he lives just north of Chicago, um, and Portillo's <laughs> on their was their fifty something anniversary is giving out. They're famous for their chocolate cake, and they're having fifty four cent slices of chocolate cake and if you're in the area you need to go and you need to get it and i'm wondering if that applies to the chocolate cake shake too because that would be phenomenal because that's my favorite way to have the cake mm. oh my god did you see the fluffy bit on that no the i did not gabriel iglesias uh-uh. <laughs> oh my god you gotta watch it because uh, he he was he describes the process and he is like everyone told him you gotta try it, you gotta try it. and so he goes up and orders it and she takes like a cake out of the fridge and he's all like I ordered a shake, and she look. She, he goes, and she looks at me. It like gave him that look, like, "Oh yeah, it's gonna <laughs> happen." <laughs> oh man, it's a funny bit. I'm gonna have to go look that up. <laughs> no, it's uh, yeah. If you haven't been to Chicago, you need to go in your life. But you need to go uh, get the chocolate cake shake for sure. 
you know, before you die, because it is, it will give you diabetes in the best way possible. Um, I think I'm gonna have to make a trip soon, man. I'm getting getting hungry for a Chicago dog, and yeah. all the local restaurants around me stopped uh, making them, so I gotta I gotta go outside my my town and grab. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, that you all Wisconsinites and your Packers who are actually decent at football, but we're not here to talk about that. Uh, <laughs> Cheeseheads. Um, so. <laughs> oh yeah, Derry. <laughs> oh, the, uh, the Wisconsin. Anyway, so uh, love the train of thought. So you get me off on the cake, and I it, it brings me <laughs> off of you know my center. It, it it takes me to a different place, to my happy place. But um, no, I want so. Cake. Huh? Yeah, I want cake now too. I, I I actually went out and bought donuts today for the first time in forever, which was fantastic. I'm like, it's been forever since I've had a Boston cream pie and donut. So good, um, yeah. Uh, let's try that. Oh, so lemons rally Volvo update. Um, so I've been too cheap slash lazy to go out and buy an engine crane. So I just decided to drop the um, front cross member with the motor and transmission on it, and surprisingly it worked. So yay, the yeah. motor's out of the Volvo. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, now I just got to get the Nissan motor into it somehow. And Get it all fabbed up, so uh, I'm willing to take well, some questions. Out. Yeah, yeah. Some frames out. You take it off the motor, and now this you might need an engine crane for it. Now you just gotta match the subframe and the the engine cradle up together. And yeah, see, see, we're doing this on the cheap and the lazy, Johnny. That's the idea. So, uh, so me going out and buying that crane that just violates that whole rule. So I'll Harbor take, Freight, man. Harbor Freight. <laughs> yeah, that's that's the cheapest one. And see, I thought about doing that, but then I also thought I, I might try and rig up because I got a bunch of because uh, I have the I have a couple of scissor jacks, and I'm thinking about just rigging up something because I'm lazy. So if you're close to me. You can use mine. <laughs> Where are you at again? Because I'll come down. To, you're in Richmond, right? Yeah. Yeah. That, that might be a haul. It might be more money in gas than. Yeah, we. I don't know. We might. We might. We might talk. We'll see. Um, but that, see, that breaks the lazy thing. I. I kind of want to make something though. Am I crazy for wanting to make something? As long as you don't hurt yourself. <laughs> A little bit. <laughs> yeah. So I don't know. Have you seen uh? Have you seen, seen the one? rig they built on Project Binky, where he has four scissor jacks all connected together? Yeah, I saw so he can that. raise things up on like an even plane. Maybe you could build something like that. Mm-hmm. Well, I got I got a couple of scissor jacks because I've gone through a couple of like crappy cars. I got the Porsche for free, and then I got a bunch of like car parts that didn't belong to the Volvo with the Volvo, just because he didn't know if they went to it. So I got a couple of scissor jacks now, and I can I can probably rig up something to get that engine up into the air. But you know, I I've been inspired by the Project Binky guys to like make tools because I got a welder. And I got, you know, I can go out. They and make get some cheap crazy money. shit. Yeah. So the best advice I could give you that my shop teacher gave us was, if you're gonna do something stupid, let your friend hold it. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So here's another great thing. So I had most of that front subframe come down and hit my toe when I was moving it. So it like three toes, like it rolled over on top of. Toes are perfectly fine. The I fractured a toe recently because I was wandering around my house at night with the lights off, turning off all the lights, and I kicked my sofa so hard I fractured a toe. So that that's how my life works. Is I don't break it doing the stupid shit. I break it doing the responsible shit. So <laughs> I, I don't know what that that like blessing slash curse is, but like oh fractured toe from sofa, that makes sense. Fractured toe or perfectly fine toes, even though they've been crushed in a non-steel toe boot underneath the front subframe of a car with an engine on it. Yeah, that, yeah. such maybe as maybe you should invest in some steel toe boots or steel toed slippers at least for when you're if they do turn they, off lights. <laughs> yeah, steel toe slippers. Make a market for it. Be how you make your money. Yeah, if, there if, we go. Write that idea down. Hold on, I have to look up and, if this uh, is a thing because we, this might be coming out of the show. That's true. Every everything has already been thought of, if, right? Steel if, toe, if it, steel I'm toe. sure if it was, um, that a Freiburger would have a set. <laughs> 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 they they make 
They make Converse uh, Chuck Taylors with steel toes in it. So that's a thing. Uh, I don't see steel toe bunny slippers. Uh, yeah, okay. Apparently they make everything these days. So they make. <laughs> I might have to pick up some steel toe bunny slippers. I can't tell if that's a walkthrough or if that's like an actual like sold thing. I don't know. That maybe that's how I'm gonna make my millions and get my talking toilet and my case back racing. So <laughs> again, the, the weird. See, this is. I I come up with million dollar ideas and I give them out for free on the show. See, people need to listen so they can steal my ideas. I think the world would be a better place. Um, yeah, lost my train. No, so the the motor's out. New motor is probably gonna go back in. Um, it, or new motor is going back in, but it, it's one of those things of. Do you all think we'll, we'll take a poll of the you know three people I have here? Should I go straight to putting a roll cage into this car, or should I wait to put the roll cage in um, until after I get a couple of months of like street use out of it? Uh, my question would be: uh, when or when and what's your next event? Because uh, if you can do like a like lemons type s type of an event that you don't need a cage for right away. Uh, I would probably put off the cage as long as you can. Mm. Yeah, but see, the only reason I want to put a cage into it is because I'm taking the airbag out of it. So that's right. Yeah. So just for that extra little bit of safety to it. I don't know. I, but I'm like super paranoid. As as weird as it sounds with my discussion of just dropping a steel you know, subframe onto my toe, I'm actually a little paranoid about safety driving vehicles, especially a vehicle I'm putting together. Cause I do well, stuff. Hey, I, yeah. I took off my airbag in my Grand Prix. I'm I'm rocking an aftermarket wheel with no airbag. Mm. <laughs> how, yeah. How did you get the? Well, I I've been looking. Maybe it's just because I buy weird cars, but it doesn't look like there's a Volvo hub adapter out there that's easy to get on. So, but well, that's fine. The whole drive shaft's coming out, so it doesn't even matter anymore. So, doesn't the Porsche ones go in? So that's right. That's how that's gonna work. So, um, yeah, I just solved my own issue in five seconds. Um, there you go. Mm-hmm. But to answer your question, a lot of a lot of WD forty and a big pry bar to get it off. <laughs> yeah, well, I got the I got it all dis- disconnected. It's just one of those things where uh, I was looking at putting on a different steering wheel, and I looked up hub adapters, and I was like, oh, they don't make shit for Volvo because no one makes aftermarket Volvo parts because not very many idiots put aftermarket steering wheels into Volvos. So. I'm sure there's a universal one yeah. somewhere. Yeah. Yeah. Ooh, you need that... to find a friend with a lathe who knows how to use it. Yeah, that, that might be what I do. Well, but, I mean, you do have a welder. Yeah, also true. Mm. <laughs> yeah, or, or welded. Yeah. I'm not too attached to the thing. Um, but I did find, so I was going through my bad idea checklist here. Now, let me ask you all how you feel about this. I can put a dual rear caliper setup on it and put a pneumatic rear brake line in, um, pneumatic e-brake in for drifting. Good idea or best idea? Best idea. Okay. Best idea. Excellent. Because it, it's like, well, I got these Porsche calipers just laying around. What should I do with them? Oh, there we go. Um, excellent. So I'm glad Can't let them go to waste. That's what I look at it. You know, Steph has already given me a hard enough time about destroying that poor car. Uh, now I'm going to be using even less parts. It basically just turned into a free pair of seats at this point, which is kind of sad, and a whole bunch of instrument shit. But I, if I can use the rear brakes for the greater good, I think I shall. Um, I'm just glad to hear this idea is approved. Now, getting them on, that's going to require a bit of welding, but whatever. Um, also, did not know Volvos came stock with a uh, limited slip rear diff until I took the damn thing apart, um, which is probably how I didn't die on the mountains in the Lemon Rally. Um, yeah, I don't know. So, let me see here. I'll try to remember. So, Eric, you haven't been on the show before, right? I have not, no. Okay. So, there is a question I have to ask you before we uh, go for the evening, and it's probably the most important question that's ever been asked of anyone. Um, I try and ask it of everyone, but what is the hardest food to eat while you drive? Hmm. Mm. Hardest food to eat while you drive? Yeah. See, this is, it takes a while and you need to think about it. It's. I know, because I, I feel like there have been times where I've eaten something while I'm driving and thought, this is a horrible idea, but I can't think of what they were. All right. 
All right, I'll save the day here because I've never answered this question either. And I, you know? every show I've lit, no, every, because you started doing this like practically after I was interviewed. But every time I, I, I hear you listen to the show, I keep thinking about it and thinking about it. And like before, it was like another person because that would be really hard to eat, but that's also called cannibalism. So my second answer would be an elephant ear because I just had one today and like you take the tiniest bite and it's like crumble. <laughs> okay, for those of us who don't live in the Midwest and are carnival folk, explain what an elephant ear is. It's a like a thin kind of pastry and it's like loaded with cinnamon and powdered sugar on it and yumminess. <laughs> and it's also about, I don't know, six, seven inches in di uh, diameter. I'm looking this up. So elephant ear food, because this is I've never heard of this thing before. I thought I knew what it was, but I apparently well, it comes up under the classification of fried dough for other people. Yep. Yeah. OK, so I know what this is. Yeah, no, that would be yeah, very that would tasty. Be, that would be impossible to eat in a car without creating a mess. You are correct. And that's powdered <laughs> sugar mess, which is just going to be that's how you get ants. That, that's, you know, that yeah, just like rubs into everything. Yeah. It doesn't matter how long you own that car. You will find powdered sugar somewhere. Oh, yeah. Oh, that, that would be awful. That, that's a new leader in the clubhouse, too. That, that, that's a good one. That, ice cream's bad when it makes a mess, but you probably can clean it all up eventually. And I don't know. The powdered sugar might be going away. You, you're always going to find that. Like, oh, oh, yeah. Well, that's bad. Uh, Eric, do you have anything that can compete with that? I was, I, I was kind of thinking along the lines of ice cream. Mostly from a personal experience, and this is affected a bit by the car I was driving, but uh, during this last summer, we liked to go on uh, ice cream runs in my Bronco with the shell off as a family. And uh, we'd get, like, you know, just little soft serve ice cream cones, and, you know, sometimes I'd be eating it on the way home, and they have the little paper slip over the cone, you know, and trying to get that off, like, to get the last bit of the ice cream could be kind of a pain especially when you're driving a 30 year old truck because it has a lot of play in the steering wheel and you can't like freehand it for a minute you know while you get it off like because it'll start you have to adjust the wheel constantly because there's so much play in it yeah, that, that's and so it, it 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 turns into kind of a mess but that's also the situation of the the vehicle being driven at the time but also helps because you know everyone was in there and i just hand to my wife and say here take this paper thing off for me but there's still the the question of not being able to to look at the cone and see where ice cream was dripping off because I was driving this you know big steel death trap. So <laughs> that, that that's a good you know, one. That. Ice cream is pretty much always going to be high up in the clubhouse, not because it's particularly yeah. messy, but because it's next to impossible to clean off the ice cream. Although I don't know the elephant, the quote unquote elephant ear. Such a Midwestern there, Johnny. Like, <laughs> call everything. Sounds sort of like a funnel cake. Yeah, it's basically a funnel yep. cake. That, but that's the idea I was getting. Yeah, kind of like a funnel cake, yeah. which it's, would also be but terrible. But a funnel cake is but, kind of thi uh, thicker, but I mean, elephant ear is pretty thin. And yeah, it's a little very, flakier. Yeah, it's very crumbly. Crumbier. I mean, like I don't even when I get them, I don't even take it out of the bag. They're so crumbly. I just leave it in the bag, and just chow down. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> For those of you who've never lived in the Midwest, uh, to give you an idea of um, how it works, like there was, I think about every third mom and pop place has a deep fat fried something that shouldn't be deep fat fried, whether it's an Oreo, Twinkie, you know, corn, like corn on the cob. Like we deep fat fry a whole corn on the cob. Like they, 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 they Snicker bars. Snicker bars, yeah, like. Candy being deep fat fried is pretty bad. Deep fat fried ice cream. Pretty much if it's a food stuff, I think between Illinois, Indiana, Wisconsin, Iowa, and Minnesota, I think it's been deep fat fried and ingested by people. Even if it's slightly edible, I think it's been ingested. You don't, you don't get that in other parts of the country. Like I'm still like detoxing. I've been out of the Midwest for like nine years, and I'm still detoxing from, you know, they like, kind of like it in the South too, though. They, yeah, but they maybe it's not to the same extent. But they they do deep fry a lot of things. Mm -hmm. They put yeah. a lot of sugar I'm, in everything. 
Yeah, I'm I'm kind of at the transition point between Mid Atlantic and South, and there's a lot of places like you described, not too far from here. Not really. See, I always thought, in my experience in Virginia, North Carolina has always been um, the way you all get fat and diabetic is from sweet tea. Like, am I wrong? Is is it? Yeah. Is it, yeah. I mean, S- somewhat. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like I, I always figured. The people in the Midwest die because we eat all the fried stuff. The people in the South die because of the diabetic, you know. Because you got Coca-Cola and you got sweet tea, which is just a uh, terrible mix. And then, uh, although, not Coca-Cola in particular, just in case they ever decide they want to sponsor this. Um, <laughs> but it, it's, I don't think that's going to happen. And we have Cookout. Uh, yeah, I've, I keep hearing about Cookout. I, I know one guy here who's from North Carolina who swears that it's awful. I'm like, you must be you must have been kicked out for, like, calling Cookout awful because everyone else says it's amazing. Like, I don't know this Cookout. Cookout, to me, is grilling out mm-hmm. at home. So <laughs> No, it's apparently it's yeah, a there's, fantastic there's a, restaurant. Uh, yeah, it's a fast food place. It's uh, based in North Carolina, but... Uh, there's some locations in Virginia. Yeah, it, it's it sounds amazing for those of us for those of us unfamiliar. Like it, it's barbecue stuff basically. Yeah, and, and fast food like burgers and chicken tenders, and they have thirty six flavors of shakes. I think. Mm. Okay, again with my, what is the best worst for you shake they have there? Probably caramel cheesecake. All right, making a trip down to there. Uh, so, besides the talking toilet and the K spec racing, uh, I got a new thing when I make a whole bunch of money. I'm going from uh, state to state to find the worst possible shake for me and ingesting it. And that might be the uh, chocolate caramel cheesecake because that sounds amazingly bad. Oh, that sounds so good. Did, is it actual cheesecake in there or is it like a cock tea? Yeah, yeah, it's like it's like little cubes of cheesecake mm, i don't know I, I might have to make a road trip i might, might come down and grab a uh engine hoist and a uh caramel cheesecake I don't know, it sounds good uh, <laughs> it, it, it it's really good <laughs> mm, it, oh, that sounds amazing well well eric what's terrible for your health around where you're at um on, on the subject of shakes there's a there's a chain that's kind of, it's kind of a big chain around here, but it's called the Arctic Circle, and they have a lot of different shakes, and they do have cheesecake, but they don't have actual chunks of cheesecake in it. That's that's something new. Mm-hmm. That's a little crazy, but uh, no, mostly Utahns just get hooked on prescription drugs and kill themselves with that. No, oh, well, <laughs> that's the that's the easy way out. Come on, now you got to go with the slow, painful, diabetic death. Oh, my, my wife just reminded me that we have a place called Iceberg. Oh. And it's a uh, little, like, drive-in kind of place. And some, some are a little different. They have, like, a big outdoor dining area. But they have a lot of different shakes, and they're all loaded with sugar. But the most important thing is it's one of those places where you order, like, a small shake, and they'll show you the cup size it goes in. And it's, like, I don't know, like six inches tall. But they have this lid that's like almost as tall as the cup itself that they put over it, and they fill it up to the whole that whole lid. Yeah, I, so if you order a large, it's like it's like buying a quart of ice cream. Yeah, I, I I'm curious. I, I pulled up a picture of it on the Googles. Um, it looks like the cup has an erection sticking out the top of it. <laughs> yeah, that, that sounds about right, actually. The cup is practicing safe sex, right? Yeah. <laughs> it's got like a little. Yeah, yeah, like, it's. And like the picture they have on their website has like it's the shake, but it has like, uh, what is this? Like the little like, the little gum, like the little hard gum. I forget what it's called all of a sudden, but like they have like that inside the shake. So that's probably pretty terrible for you. So this will be my plan: go from state to it's state. It's delicious, though. Yeah. Oh, it it looks delicious. You know, it's very phallic shape, but it is amazing. It's a circumcised shake. That's pretty much what this is. Um, well, and it's and it's not even like your thin shake. It's like a concrete, so it's hard. Mm-hmm. So it, it's it's more filling too. Like mm. if you order a large one, like I don't think I've ever actually finished one. Ugh. Like even if I think I can, like I 
get most of the way through it, and I'm like, I'm I'm dying. I have to stop. No, I'm also a lightweight, so you know, maybe some bigger fellows can get all the way through it, but little <laughs> 115 pound me just can't, can't hack it. I was gonna say, are we going with phrasing here? Because like, uh, we're talking about erection shaped shakes, and you're talking about like, I can't get through it. I can't finish. Oh, maybe a bigger fellow. I need a bigger fellow. Yeah. Uh. Uh, it, it, see, this is we start terribly and we end terribly. That's how this this, this whole thing <laughs> works out. Did we talk about cars at all over the last hour? I'm not sure if we actually did. Um, <laughs> uh, I'm sure we did. <laughs> yes, yeah, somewhere in there we did. Um, yeah, in that, the middle. Yeah, briefly. I, I, I feel like we have to end with something vaguely car related, but I, I I'm I'm scraping my mind to think of it. Ooh. I, I got a good one for for everyone, and I'm not I'm not sure if I've asked this of everyone before, but uh, what is your driving pet peeve? And I think Michael, you've been on the show before. Have I asked you that? I want to say yes. Mm, let, me, let me think of. Let me go through my little list of pre-prepared questions here and see if I got anything to pull out my ass at the last possible moment. Uh, this is not killing the uh, momentum of the show at all. Here you go. I got help you out. Oh, automotive. Okay. Um, the your question about uh, what turns you off about the automotive scene. Oh, okay, that's a good one. Yeah. What is your least favorite automotive trend? So like, donk, bro, dozer, stance nation, bro, like that sort of thing. Like, it, you don't have to necessarily be one of these people because we always say the show is donk friendly, but the, everyone's got their own taste. So everyone's got to hate something. So, Michael? Oh, uh, uh, I, I just had something that I drew a blank. Crap. Um. Well, while you're remembering, why don't we move on to Eric? And see, you can tell yeah. which whose name I wrote in what order. Eric? I, uh, I'm trying to think of something that doesn't make me sound generic, but really the thing that drives me the most nuts is the huge camber and tires look mm. like i don't get the form or functionality of it some things like i think i just the audacity of it just kind of is just kind of amusing like donks like i would never do it but it does kind of make me laugh to watch it but i see a car driving on stretch tires and the wheels are at like a 45 degree angle and i i just can't not shake my head mm. like i i think less of that person no matter what Dude, you, spent, just, you spent all this time and effort, and I just don't understand you. Yeah, yeah exactly. Just like, yeah. I, nope, not getting it. Mm. Michael, what did you... intentionally you, made your car less drivable. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Well, you made it undrivable. is really what you did, because you can't drive that car. Yeah. yeah. You've had some time to think, Michael. What do, what do you think? Well, that was what I was going to say. His stance. <laughs> I, that's why I, that's why I said I don't want to sound so generic because that's what everyone says. But really, yeah. the more I think about Johnny, it, like it just makes the least sense. Well, Johnny, yeah, how, I, I, how about you and your stanced car? Are you going to defend it? I love my stanced car, and I mean it's not. No, don't get me wrong. It's it's. I think it's more hella flush than stanced. <laughs> See, and I'm I'm better with hella flush. I mean, like I still my, don't get it, but. I'm talking a little bit of tire, but I'm not like I'm not wickedly cambered or anything. Um, but my automotive pet peeve is the uh, the AutoZone special race car oh. racer. You know they oh, got the man. fart cans on there. They got the <laughs> they they stick on hood vents and all that mm -hmm. stuff. I actually saw a hilarious one of those today, which almost made me like it again until I heard the fart can. I was like, mm, nope, no, nah, not again. Like, it, now, it, have you guys have you guys ever seen a bastardized version of that? And I mean, the uh, a guy who took the time to duct tape, duct tape, cardboard body kit, body panels like fend, uh, bumper, fender, uh, side skirts, rear bumper. <laughs> yeah, I, I, see then, I thought it I've was seen done ironically. Of, yeah, I've seen that as a yeah, I've seen that done ironically. Yeah. I've seen At least I saw it or hoped it was ironically. <laughs> Maybe it wasn't. Who knows? I've seen it in person, and this guy took two Mountain Dew 12 packs and duct taped them to his hood like roof, sco like hood scoops. <laughs> yeah, 
Yeah, I saw a picture of a Civic that was like that, and on the back it said uh, it said V Tech. <laughs> <laughs> on the like they had written it he had written it on the uh on the cardboard body kit <laughs> no, that, i, I kind of like that to be honest it, it, you're kind of owning the crappiness at that point uh All right yeah well, i think that yeah i i <laughs> yeah, go on i have a honda so i have to i have a honda so i have to deal with the stance people and the ricer people <laughs> So I just now, I just try not to associate with other Honda owners. <laughs> you say you own a Honda, but tell us how many Hondas do you have? Okay, three and a half. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I have two GTPs. <laughs> yeah, I have three and a half Preludes. <laughs> nice. Is that the wedge nose dial? Uh, the one and a half. One is, and the half is. Oh, nice. The other, the other two are. Uh, one is the weird looking one, and one is one of the last ones. <laughs> now we get to the car stuff. Yeah, it, it, <laughs> I'm, I'm curious how you have half a car. It's just the shell. Uh, okay, that makes sense. Like when we're saying shell, we're just talking about body panels. Or are we talking about suspension? What are we talking about here? Just no engine or transmission. Got it. I was very confused because like half a car to me is like a car cut in half. So like you got like the front half and no rear. Hey, it's front wheel drive. Don't matter. Yeah, it's uh, front wheel drive. So that would work. That, yeah, that's right. Go to yeah. Hyper Freight, get some casters, and just call it a day. Um, I wonder if or just put titanium like... plates on the bottom and just you know make sparks everywhere mm-hmm. all the time. That, that... it's just a parts car, so yeah, I just call sense. it half. A... So then wait. This might be a unique position here. I've never been in before. So, Eric, how many cars do you own? I own three. Okay. Michael? You got three, three and, and a half. half. Okay. And then, yeah. Johnny, you have how many cars? Two Grand Prix and a Buick. Mm. My fiance has a has a car of her own. So, if you want to count her as four. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was going to say. So, Eric, are you – you're – you got three cars to yourself, right? Um, technically, two are to myself. Oh, okay. We have one that's a family car that my wife generally primarily drives, unless both my cars are out of commission, and sometimes I steal it. It's it's a rare position for me to realize. Wait a minute, I'm tied for last place in number of cars. That's that's weird, because I got two for <laughs> myself and one for the wife. Like, oh, that's strange. I'm not used to that because people people who I hang out with normally all have like. The wife has a car, and I have a car, and that's how many cars we have. I'm like, how do you not have a project car? You're crazy. I don't understand <laughs> you people. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, yeah. So now we get to the we get to the talking, but now about cars. So now I gotta go. So um, we're gonna do plugs here. So Johnny, you can wait till last. We'll get Michael in first. <laughs> <laughs> Shout out to the uh, Slack crew. All right. I need to figure out how one gets on that. So, Eric, what's going on? What do you got to got to plug? The plug? Yeah. I don't know. I don't plug anything nowadays. Mm. Um, oh, by the way, we have e- ELUE says hi to everyone. He tried to make it this evening but was unable to. Um, and then, uh, Johnny, I'm going to tell you to give us your plugs, and I'm just going to get up and walk away to the computer for the, for the next five minutes. So. <laughs> okay, so I'll, I'll take my time here. Um, you can check out Blown Pistons on the Spreaker app. You just search Blown Pistons there or, B- or Bad Habits Network. Check those out, badhabitsnetwork.net. Oh, wow, there's the Midwestern in there, me. <laughs> <laughs> you can uh, check out my uh, auto detailing business, or my, me and my fiance's auto detailing business. You can check that out on Facebook at uh, Attention for Detail LLC or attentionfordetail.com as well. Um, where we do fantastic automobiles and we clean them right. Mm-hmm. That's what I see on the pictures. That can't be. Come on, John. You got more than that. Come on now. I want all the plugs. Give me all the plugs. <laughs> that, that's uh, that's that's about it right now. Um, and then uh, our, well, our grand opening is going to be next weekend, uh, April eighth. If anyone's around the area or can mm-hmm. make it up. Mm-hmm. And that's mm-hmm. five. Where is it? I'm sorry, I stepped on you there for a second. That is twelve to five, uh, twelve p.m. to five p.m. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. well, we're, 
you got to so you go on Facebook, you look it up. Was it attention to detailing? Is what you said. Attention for detailing. Attention for or detail. detail. Uh, see attention there. for detail. See, look, I I already goofed it up. I mean, you got come on, you got you got you got your Facebook. You, don't you have an Instagram too? No, yeah, we're working on that stuff. Mm-hmm. We're working on the Instagram and the. And then you can follow you on the Twitter. Come on, you got work. Yep, you need the to... Twitter. All right, all right. <laughs> so we got we got YouTube GTP Johnny, I think. But uh, me and a friend of mine might change that to uh, GTP House or Garage. We're we're thinking about changing it to that because both me and my um, my buddy, who is a more fancy with the cameras, you know, if you know, I might have a little photographer going on there and you know he might want to do the he's up for doing the recording so you know we might be doing some like common the goal here is the common like questions asked in the grand prix community such as how to remove adhesive from the side molding uh to just your better general uh, knowledge and maintenance knowledge and um i'm on youtube uh, twitch or twitter is GTP Johnny and I think that's it. Anything else? <laughs> Blowing yeah. pistons on uh, you, uh, Facebook group, Facebooks. <laughs> mm-hmm. I, to, I just have to give Johnny a hard time. He did send the wonderful stickers again. If you want one, once he gives to me, um, I don't know. Um, send me an email. I mean, I'll get it figured out and get it sent out to you. I think I still have like. A couple stickers from the opposite lot for me to still have to send out to people too. So I've been slacking <laughs> on that. Yeah, it's it's what I do. And then hey, I still like uh, I still like the idea of you coming up to Portillo's and us hitting up Portillo's and then going go kart racing, see who throws mm-hmm. up first. Mm-hmm. Can we can we do Mario Kart <laughs> racing? Because I'm good at that. I don't, I don't want to. <laughs> I feel less embarrassed losing at that. Rainbow Road. Ooh, well, that's a good one. Uh, before we go with it. Uh, what is your least favorite Mario Kart course? Johnny, go. Uh, uh, dude, I haven't played Mar- that Mario Kart in so long, but Rainbow Road did it frustrate me. Mm-hmm. But I got better at it. Mm-hmm. Michael, Eric? Uh, uh, uh. Rainbow Road hey, for um, me, too. <laughs> there, was, there was one on the original Mario Kart. It was the special one, the, um, the Donut Plains. Mm. And also on Mario Kart 64, Toad's Turnpike had to run it in reverse against the flow of traffic. That was frustrating. Oh, I hated that one too. <laughs> what was the one with the penguins in the ice? That was a son of a bitch. <laughs> that was. Is that, is that in Diddy Kong actually? Was that in Diddy Kong? Or was that Mario Kart? Uh, I no, there was, I one, there was, was Mario one Mario Kart, Kart that had the. Yeah, it was Mario Kart 64. It was one of the snow snow tracks mm-hmm. where it had like the minefield of penguins that were made of. Yeah. That was this bastard of a thing yeah okay so so we've talked about shitting and being raped in the <laughs> nose and then mario kart and then what uh, ice cream where we're at is going to kill us i feel like this has been a quite successful uh you know, podcast <laughs> outing for the evening so gentlemen thank you so much for joining me uh i will put this to end here in just a second but for everyone listening follow the show at untitled car show uh, give Do us it. a like on, um, or not like, give us a review on iTunes. Johnny, I just saw you did one. That was very nice of you. On iTunes, yeah. that, that helps us out a bunch. Um, it moves us up to ratings mm-hmm. there. Uh, tell a friend, tell a loved one, tell a coworker. If you know someone who likes cars or tree rape, this is the podcast for them. <laughs> or somehow they're into both. Like, like Go to Best to Buy it. and subscribe to the Untitled Car Show on oh. all their computers. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> That works. Or just do it. Do it around the office randomly. Ooh, no! If you work at a call center and you know how to get around all the security, <laughs> do it to all the people at the call center. All right, uh, everyone listening. Thanks so much. Have a good night. Have a good evening. Wherever you are, thanks for listening. And.